The first time we saw this data coming through from JWST, I cried. I saw it and I was like, holy wow, this is amazing. We are going to be, we're going to be learning so much in the coming decades. An exoplanet is a planet that orbits a star other than the sun. And we're trying to understand more about the nature of planets in our universe so that we can learn more about the origin of our own solar system. We are at the stage where we know of thousands of exoplanets around other stars. And over the last decade or so, we've been looking into some of these worlds to understand more about their atmospheres. We want to know what they're made of and how their environment affects their atmospheric circulation. We've been using the Hubble Space Telescope to do this, and we've learned a huge amount about planets across all kinds of scales and sizes. Space telescopes are really important for looking at exoplanets because if we're trying to look at something from the ground, we also have to be looking through Earth's atmosphere. And that can cause confusion as to whether what we're looking at is happening in the planet we're trying to study or if it's something that's happening here on Earth. When we're in space, we have the advantage that we don't have to worry about it being day or night because we can always be pointing away from the sun. To study the atmospheres of these planets, we're looking at them as they pass in front of their star. This is called a planetary transit. We're staring at the star itself and we're seeing as the planet passes in front of it in its orbit. This causes a change in the amount of light from the star. We can measure that and that tells us the size of the planet. To look at the atmospheres themselves, we're seeing the starlight as it shines through that planet's atmosphere in transit. That atmosphere will contain different materials, and those materials will block the light in characteristic ways. Each atom and molecule has its own unique fingerprint, and we can measure that in what we call the spectrum of that planet's atmosphere. It's a really exciting time to be involved in exoplanets. We just had the launch of JWST, and it's now started sending us down data. JWST is this brand new telescope that was launched in December 2021, and it started its science operations in the summer of 2022. It's got wider wavelength coverage, higher precision, better signal than anything that we've seen before. And it's also gold plated, which means that it can reflect infrared light much, much better than the traditional mirrors that you might think of, which have kind of a silvery plating to it. So we're able to see all the different wavelengths broken up across the entire of that infrared region. And then we use that to understand what's happening in the planet's atmosphere. JWST has four instruments. Three of those instruments are in the near infrared. This is just beyond the red part of what our eyes can see, all the way through to what we call five microns. So that's a measurement of the wavelength of the light. Those near infrared instruments actually are able to cover the absorption fingerprints of things like water, carbon dioxide, methane, carbon monoxide, and other exotic species like photochemically generated sulfur species, or, you know, some nitrogen species and other really cool things that we're looking for in these atmospheres. Over the summer, I've been using the early release science data to understand what's happening in the atmosphere of WASP 39b and understand uh, the presence of different molecules in its atmosphere. WASP 39 is a sun-like star in the constellation of Virgo, about 700 light years away. Orbiting around it is the planet WASP-39b. WASP-39b is a Saturn mass planet, but it's the size of Jupiter. This means it's incredibly low density and it has a very extended atmosphere, which is mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. We saw some things we were expecting, but we also saw evidence of SO2, and that was something we hadn't anticipated seeing and was a real surprise to us. It was really exciting to see this little bump that we never thought was going to be visible for us. The first time we saw this data coming through from JWST, I cried, I saw it and I was like, holy wow, this is amazing. We are going to be, 
We're going to be learning so much in the coming decades. JWC has been planned for decades now, and I have been lucky enough to be working towards using this instrument for over 10 years. And to finally have the data is a little bit mind blowing. It's fantastic. Everything we're doing, everything that we're seeing, we're learning something new and we're asking brand new questions. Now that we have our observations and we have a decent understanding of what the atmosphere of WASP-39b looks like, the next thing is to really fit our models to this planet and understand exactly what's going on. So we'll use a technique called retrieval analysis, which allows us to fit many, many different models to the atmosphere that we're seeing and pick out the different amounts of different species that are within the atmosphere and things like the pressure and temperature at different layers within the atmosphere. We're also going to be using the Hubble Space Telescope to look at a range of planets across all different kinds of temperatures to understand and examine trends in their cloud properties. If you put that in combination with JWST, we can get this whole picture of that planet's atmosphere and understand all the different the components that make it up. The Transiting Exoplanet Community Early Release Science Program includes hundreds of astronomers across the entire world working towards a single goal. How can we understand these planetary atmospheres in more detail? And how can we provide the community with information on how to use JWST? Being part of the ERS program has been pretty wild. It's involved lots of strange hours connecting with people all over the world, but they all bring such unique expertise that I wouldn't have it any other way. Going forward, we're going to be looking at more planets. We are going to be using JWST to examine planets of all different sizes, from giant hot Jupiters down to cool rocky worlds. From this, we're hoping to create 3D maps of these planetary atmospheres from data alone. And that's a really big step in getting to the scientific questions we want answered. Where does our planet fit in the grand scale of exoplanets in our galaxy? Every single little point of light that you see in the night sky probably has a planet going around it that is still waiting to be studied and understood and might potentially look something like what we see in the solar system. But it just reminds me how amazing and how special Earth is that we happen to look exactly the way we do and everything was right for us to be here. <laughs>